Howdy, folks. Dr. Freedom here with the Times from Dr. News. News from in around the universe. So incredible, so amazing, so spectacularly bodacious that some archaeologist may somehow unearth this, get it, let's beat up old server to work and say, wow, that was the shit back then. Oh, okay, but um, let's get into it. Let's get onto it because there's a lot of stuff to cover. Oh, yes, yeah, Slicky, we're going to go to my favorite side on the Twitter after you bounce out the trolls with your block button. Because look at what we got here. We got some DWSR, baby. That's right. Apparently, this is being set up at the HTC plant in Sheffield. Um, check it out. We got cranes. We got cranes. We got more cranes. What's going on? Don't know, but check this stuff out. That is going to be one interesting shoot just based off the picture seen here. So, really wild stuff going on out there in Doctor Who filming land. Oh, baby, oh, I'm going to so retweet that stuff. Oh, yeah, look at it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, th this is just such spoilery stuff looking at cranes, ain't it? But, okay. <laughs> so... The HTC plant in Sheffield well, apparently is where they were, are at now. Um, uh, all right. All right. It's near Meadow Hall. Okay. So boom, boom, boom. Once again, if you want to go check out the DWSR hashtag, you can, but you're going to have to walk through a mile of trolls. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. All right. That's right. There's another photo down here. These are some of the guys at Real SFX apparently up to something. I think that's Welsh. I can't be sure. It's got to be Welsh because they're in a translate button for it. Oh, okay. Um, so moving on, boom, boom, boom. Also, this fella here put this up for, um, also in Sheffield. This is one of the lighting trucks here, basically. Like I said, there's not more than the usual amount of security guards from the photos I've seen. And trust me, there's a lot of photos getting passed around. You see, what amazes me is it was those evil DWSR people. No, let's try it. The star. Uh, yesterday, also in Sheffield, there's Mandip Gill on the scene. Like I said, normal, say the normal police, normal security. That's all normal. So, boom, boom, boom. Here we go. Sheffield briefly turned into Hollywood yesterday's residents. Notice a number of camera crews filming across the city. Um, they were down, of course, from the BBC shooting of Series 11 of Doctor Who which stars Chase presenter uh, what you call, and Jody Whitaker. And, of course, Bradley Walsh is what they meant to say there. I don't know why that. Okay, stars were seen in around Newport last week, but it appears they've moved further up north to continue their filming. Now, okay, da -da -da, Whitaker will be the first, blah, 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 and, of course, Washington, and we already know that. So some interesting stuff going on in Sheffield. Weird, weird, weird. Now, one of the things we have noticed is they have tried to imply ninja filming where they literally get in, they shoot something, and they get back out for anyone who even knows they're there. So they're being a little bit more devious than Moffat was when his crew and whatnot, but he never went on set, did he? Okay. All right, new details revealed for Peter Cabaldi's Doctor Who Regeneration and Jodie Whittaker. The problem is it's telling a bunch of stuff we already know. Look at this. Here's the big mind-boggling re re you know, revelation. Here we go. It's fair to say Doctor Who fans are pretty excited for this year's Christmas special, which will see Peter Capaldi's Doctor team up with his former self to battle a mysterious time-freezing force. We kind of got that from the trailer on our own, didn't we? Also, apparently, um, Rachel Talay on the Radio Free Scarrow podcast said there's a little bit of, like, I want to see Jody now. There's been a lot of people going, you know, they're really looking forward to seeing her. Um, what I do hope is for Christmas, you don't have your Christmas pudding and your brandy and say, okay, let's just get to the regeneration. I hope you can actually enjoy the story too, she said. Um, okay. Talay wasn't shy about discussing some aspects of the pivotal final scene, which she shot with both Capaldi and Whitaker's parts for four on different days under the direction of blah, blah, he, he'll go, and you know, that new boss, Chris Chibnall. So we know that guy. He's on his way out. Who cares? All right, now, I knew I was going to shoot both parts of the regeneration, but I did say to Chris Chibnall, if you want a different director to introduce J Jody, you should have a different director and because he's creating a whole new world. But he, was, he too is absolutely lovely and said, no, we're absolutely delighted it's going to be you and no one else. 
And so we sat down and talked about the Jody portion of their generation, and it was wonderful. The thing I love to talk to about and look forward to talking about in the future is how I plan Peter's portion of the regeneration versus how I planned and shot Jody's. Because as a director, that was a really satisfying, interesting, fun challenge, and I'm really pleased you know, with both sides of it. Now, she could talk about, I said, the side to Capaldi, she could talk about was Capaldi's, revealing the Scottish actor played a big part in the planning of his final scene. When it came to their generation in the Christmas episode, Peter has a big scene about it, as one would expect, as he and I spent some time alone in the TARDIS, which is his place to sit when he wants to be quiet. We just sat there in that space alone, talking to that whole scene and talking through in this happy space. Um, so he has hundreds of notes on this on his script. Again, I view myself as a guide, but he was deeply into it. And it's absolutely a Peter tour de force. As you can imagine, I was so lucky to get to do it. So like I said, first part of the article, nothing you really want to hear. Second part, okay, moving on. First look at the newly animated Lost Doctor Who episode shot up. Now, everybody, please, let's gather around. It's time for a campfire. Um, guys, I got to tell you a little something. Um, Shada was never lost. I'm not kidding. I'm getting tired of Shada being referred to as a lost episode. It was never lost to begin with. It just was never finished. There was no secret reels being shot off the distant Africa to be shot on by giraffes. It never existed. It, you know, it, they only got like half of it filmed and the other half just was never done. Yet they keep referring to it as a lost episode. No, a lost episode is like Marco Polo. Evil of the Daleks, stuff like you know, stuff that has not been seen in like over fifty years, because it's you know it was out there, it, it existed, and then it's been lost. You see how the keyword "lost" comes into that play in that. So, <laughs> so more info on there. Also, there is a nice clip here. Please watch it. They did a really good job in cleaning up the live action stuff. The animation is not that bad. I hope folks give it a chance. I know there's some folks out there going, why didn't they go with this version? Yada, yada, yada. Okay, and uh, David Bradley and William Hartnell, one of the great British character actors, um, goes, I think Hartnell wanted to have a bit more of a good time. He wanted to emphasize the playfulness of the Doctor. So I thought this Christmas episode, there's definitely a cheeky kind of fun to the whole thing, and I want to bring that out. And this is a lot of stuff he covered in Doctor Who magazine. Now, so boom, boom. Now get ready for this. Here we go this has been flying around the last couple of days like it had been put out on BBC One News or smacked out on the Doctor Who news page. Anton Lesser, rumored to be star in Doctor Who Series 11. And get ready for this. He's going to be the new master. And guess what? You know where it started? Gallifrey Base! Jesus H. Jones, people! Would you, are we really that desperate that we're chomping at the bit? that we're going to the site that's, what, 5% accurate? And even the most accurate stuff it gets is stolen off 4chan? Please. Oh, man. I have a Gallifrey base account that I can count on one hand, and I've had it for a few years. I can count on one hand with all, just with all my fingers to spare how many times I've actually used it because nine-tenths of it that comes out is speculation and rumor. Let's not forget that keyword, rumor. And I like that he's not only rumored to be cast, but he's also going to be the new master. I think the master needs a rest. Okay, now there's what they're claiming. Here's what you missed in that Children in Need special. Now, this was originally a clip from the Children in Need special, but if you'd rather watch Baywatch star Kelly Rohrbach parade in a skimpy outfit. Okay, uh, let's see. And it just basically goes over some stuff that you think you might like. You know, like here's an nifty part where they actually took part out of the 10th planet that still exists, I believe. And they just doctored it up a little bit, <laughs> doctored it. So, and some other, just a couple of few things here and there. It's not a major big thing, but here you go. If you want to go check this out, here it is over on the Express. All right, moving on. Big finish. Gareth David Lloyd pens the new Torchwood audio, which is very interesting because, of course, we know him as Yanto. So, it's kind of nice that Torchwood is back, especially the whole team is now officially back. Because what they do is they jump around in the Torchwood timeline. Like they even had Yvonne Hartman do her own series of Torchwood audios that take place at Torchwood One, you know, before Canary Wharf and all that. So that's why I kind of like the audiobook series because you can bring back characters like Tosh, you know, Dr. Harper and all that stuff. And so 
It's kind of nice to hear that Yanto is writing his own episodes. Moving on, the War Master is showing up in Unit. He's also showing up, showing up in Gallifrey and a bunch of other places because he's going to be in his own version, the, the War Doctor Time War series. So, boom, 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 here you go. If you want to listen to the trailer, here it is. Also, a lot of people have been pointing it, pointing us out. Is it just scary how much that Jodie Whittaker kind of looks like Kate Stewart? I'm like, that's been going all over the place. Also, in a lot, it's a really, really cold news. Now, Delia Derbyshire, who, by the way, is, like I said, she's one of the pioneers of electronic music. You know, hands down, boom, boom, boom. She was honored this week with a posthumous PhD. So really awesome that that happened and whatnot. Because like I said, I even named the ship in the Dr. Freedom and Eric audio adventures, the Delia Derbyshire after her. So boom, boom, boom. Really nice to hear that. And this is over in the guardian Travers and Wells. Candy jar books have announced the expected third volume of their novelist series will be Travers and Wells with the original title day of the intelligent is intelligence as being canceled. So if you want more details than I, and you're into candy jar books, boom, 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 here you go. You can order you can order directly from them. Boom here. There's also the Lethbridge Stewart website for their stuff there. Bam. All right. And sadly, we've lost Stein from Resurrection of the Daleks. Oh, damn it. Oops. I hit the wrong button. Um, Rodney Buse has died at the age of 79. Um, a lot of people knew him from the Likely Lads and whatever happened to the Likely Lads, um, amongst many, many other things. But I knew him as Stein. To me, he was a very memorable character in Doctor Who. And also, he did very, very good job, you know, portraying the mental struggle of that character. So, kind of sad that we lost another person in Whovian history. Okay, so, DWSR is in full swing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but like I said, if you want to go check out that hashtag, you're going to have to basically carry the machete of the block button. Uh, there's lots of idiots out there who bought into a bunch of other idiots' propaganda who now feel it is necessary to call people who just go to the set and take pictures stalkers now. Um, I guess I love how the names are flying. Yet if I guarantee you every single one of these kids, if they were in the same position would have their asses planted out on every set or alongside those people. And yet the, the only reason a lot of it happens is jealousy, envy and things like that. Are you there? Just the simple fact they won't get off their ass and go do it themselves because they know they want to. The thing is, is this, I love how they're saying they're stalking the cast and all that. Nobody has ever walked up and disrespected any of the cast that I know of on set, except for one incident where somebody recorded something they weren't supposed to. And that really ticked off Peter Capaldi. But like I said, I love how they're tarring everybody with this broad brush and trying to make it look like these kids are villains based off the actions of one idiot. You know, who pff, it just amazes me. Oh, well, folks, that's it. I'm done. Have a good night. Take care. Have a good, well, well, if I don't see you before then, have a good turkey day. I may try to squeeze in one more news item, but I doubt it. So, gobble, gobble, gobble. Don't get too much trip defending your system. That's how they get you. <laughs>